to the video. Today's video is going to be a very fun one. I am going to be doing a winter slash holiday slash Christmas reading vlog and I'm really excited. My plan is to spend today until next Sunday reading. I actually wasn't going to start this until tomorrow just because my thesis is actually due tomorrow but I finished. I think I finished. Um, we'll see tomorrow when I hear back from my advisors. But anyway, I'm going to start because I want to. Even though I have an assignment due on Wednesday, I should work on. We're going to we're gonna be doing this. But anyway, I am wearing a Mary Swiftmas uh, crew neck that has a little TS on it that I got for Christmas last winter um, from my brother. I think my brother actually got this to me for me, which is just so sweet of him. Um, but I haven't I haven't got a chance to wear it just because I got it for Christmas, so it was already, like, past the time you would wear it. So I'm very excited to pull this out. But anyway, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the books I plan on reading this week. I know I've said in a different video that these are going to continue to show up just, like, through my TBR. I think I have a holiday, like, book recommendation and whatnot. But anyway, I have five books that I'm going to try to read this week. That's that's the goal. I'm hopeful that I could read three. That might be ambitious. Maybe two. We're gonna try to we're gonna try for three just knowing that I think my first book that I'm gonna be reading, A Christmas Tree Farm or The Christmas Tree Farm, will go really fast. I think this book will go really really fast. I'm also I'm also really fast gonna look on Libby to see if any of these have an audiobook because like while I'm at work and stuff that could be a good like time to read. We'll say this week is Thanksgiving so I don't have work Thursday or Friday so I have a four-day holiday or four-day weekend I mean. Um, so I do have some wiggle room. I actually got a December to Remember on audiobook and then I put a hold on a winter in New York and then the matzah, the matzah ball. Um, so I have potentially three audiobooks. I don't know how how much audio we'll be using, but just in case I wanted to include that. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to introduce this video. I'm pretty excited. I have a winter candle burning and then I have some lemon loaf tea, which I'm really excited. It smells super, super good. Um, in my little gingerbread mug that I think I got this last year actually. But anyway, let's um, let's get to reading. everyone okay it is a little bit later oh. and I just wanted to update from earlier I ended up doing some other stuff after I filmed but I was able to get to page 36 which is the start of chapter 4 um, and I was actually right before a bed yes it is 7 p.m. and I'm ready for bed okay and what about it okay that's fine I like go to bed uh Larry actually posted a video earlier today that is a read with me and I thought that was kind of perfect so I'm gonna be reading while this is playing I guess I've never really done a video like this but I'm assuming she's just gonna have like music and the vibes are gonna be cool but first let me show you my current bookmark so you're the scarf and my friend my lovely, lovely friend, Kristen, actually drew, and I'm assuming it's watercolor, but um, this is kind of like a postcard, I guess. Um, sorry, I was just rereading it, and it's just so sweet. She spent a month abroad, and so just like she wanted to bring back postcards, but they got taken, um, or she left them, or something happened to the postcard, so she made me one instead, and I'm just like... I'm so happy. I think this is gorgeous and I'm obsessed with it. And yeah, I just love my friends. They're so awesome. But anyway, I'm going to read 
for 31 minutes because that's how long it is and I'll honestly probably read longer than that but I don't know if there's going to be any more clips tonight um I guess we'll see but let's start this book is about the brother of the main girl from the first book and I like that I like his like vibe um this book is also like the series is very inclusive which I like a lot you have different pronouns different sexual orientations you have different um you have different races like different just like different representations of people and I think that's really fun um and awesome and I think it should be like put in more books like casually as it is in this one um anyway yeah Kira is the female protagonist she's a newcomer she bought the Christmas tree farm she hates Christmas and I'm not really liking her vibe I'll be honest I think that's just because I don't really get her yet like to me I just think she's kind of like being rude for no reason and I like say that hesitantly because I really haven't like I've only read three chapters I know nothing about her but to me I'm like it seems a little much um but I mean we'll see and it's also like Bennett the main character in this he's hiding something currently like they had re referenced that he was hiding something I'm like okay what does that mean what does that mean so we're gonna read and yeah I want to get like honestly I'm like I'm probably not gonna fall asleep until nine I want to get like halfway we'll see anyway happy reading I'm gonna watch this video and I'll let you guys know how it goes so to update really fast um I watched Larry's video which was really fun I've almost been reading for an hour and I'm about 40 percent the way through I'm liking it um I want to take back my comments about about maybe not liking Kira I think I'm understanding her more which I did expect as a book goes on you understand more we also learned Bennett's secret secret which was kind of something that I was expecting so I wasn't really that surprised by it but um yeah she had her grand opening for the tree farm and it went really good I am like as I was reading this I was like what do they do when it's not Christmas time and they actually kind of brought that up that she would do other crop and I'm like Logan's a farmer for this town so like do they need another crop farmer that's that's my current question so I'm like honestly like really like how much money are you making like for a small amount of season like November December that's the only time you're selling Christmas trees but anyway I'm gonna turn off my phone I'm gonna turn off my lamp and I get my reading light out actually and I can't close it ah. and I'm gonna read so alarm on too and it's like a red light right now but anyway good night i'll talk to you guys tomorrow hey everyone happy monday i look the exact same because i'm pretty sure i'm wearing exactly what i was wearing yesterday just because you know these are my pjs for the week but anyway i wanted to talk about the christmas tree farm because i actually did finish it today i read it so quickly i think i read it like in total it took me 17 hours I did end up rating it a four stars I just want to take everything back that I said I loved Kira so much like once I got to know her um I do like part of me is still kind of like why did you have to be so rude but like I understand it more but me personally I would just never act like that but that's me I'm not her so anyway and Bennett I just loved him so dearly I thought he was so cute and his like problem that he was trying to get over um I felt like it was relatable not for me personally but honestly like I see it in my fiance even like I felt like they were very similar um a little bit I will say these are like spicy romances like honestly I'm assuming that this will probably be the spiciest book out of the books that we're reading for this week um 
So if you're interested in spice, pick this up. I don't mind it at all. I don't like it's not like I prefer it, but like I'm not going to skip it, skip the scene. And I thought I thought it was good. And literally, like the dedication said, this is a Hallmark movie if it had spice. I also just want to point out the other two books did not have a map in it as I don't think they had a map in it. So it's kind of fun to actually see what um, it looks like. And I'm kind of like, ooh, I wonder if she's planning on creating like all of these. I mean, we already, we have, so we have the Pancake House, which is the next book. We have the Christmas Tree Farm. We have the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. We have the Gingerbread Bakery, which is the fifth book. We have the Cinnamon Book or Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. We have Max Pub, which is basically just going to be the same as uh, the Gingerbread Bakery because Mac and Annie obviously go together. Um, and so leftover, we have the Pet Shop, the Ice Cream Shop, and the Flower Shop. And I'm kind of like, do we think we'll get three more books after the fifth one comes out? Because I know she has the Pancake House and then the Gingerbread Bakery like planned for the next two books. So I'm kind of I'm kind of intrigued by this but I really am sad to like put a pause on this um series because this has just like brought me so much joy in the last like seven days I think but I'm very happy that I finished it like I said four stars I'm pretty sad because I went to Barnes and Noble the other day and I found a book that had this gold flex on it the second book and the third one have it but my first one doesn't but in Barnes and Noble they did so I'm like did I just get a an edition that didn't have it like that was that like a rebranding thing I don't know I'm kind of like seriously are you being serious about that why why do I not have the gold flex please give the gold flex to me but anyway I'm gonna my fiance is actually here right now um and I'm gonna have him pick out which book I should read next he is practicing a presentation right now we did homework together um, but then I was like, I need to get ready for bed, and I am, and now I'm talking to you guys. But anyway, I am probably going to start one of these. I work tomorrow morning at 545, um, because I babysit, so I don't know if I'll read too late tonight. It is already 845, so, or it's 842, but basically 845, and so I'm like, honestly, like, I could totally pass out right now, but probably update tomorrow at some point to let you guys know which book I ended up choosing. Oh no, I'm going to do a clip like right after this, after I get London, um, to pick out which one we should read next. So I'm excited. I'm thinking to motivate me, it would be smart to pick a smaller book, but honestly, they're all about the same size. I'm like, I'm thinking that a winter New York or winter wish would be the two smallest ones maybe this one is definitely the thickest but just because it's thick doesn't mean that I'm gonna get through it quickly because uh, I'm like this one might be the thinnest but it's probably I would say the most emotional like I said Emily Henry or I don't know if I said it in this vlog but Emily Henry is like my all-time favorite Christmas winter romance author because her just having a, a certain emotional depth to it where I'm like Okay, girl, you didn't need to, you didn't need to hit me that hard. But anyway, like I said, next clip, Lena and I are going to pick out which book I read next. So, ciao, ciao. Okay. It's hey, so yes. red. I know. Do you want to turn on the light? No, whatever you want. Okay. I mean, you can. It is. It just looks evil. It is like kind of poor lighting, but. Anyway, London's going to pick out my next read, like I said. So this week I'm doing a holiday reading vlog. So I finished my first book, which was The Christmas Tree Farm. Mm. Guess what I rated it? Three. Four. Four? You liked it? I did. I was think, it better than the other in the series? Others? I think the second one was my favorite. That was the cinnamon? Mm-hmm. Bun bookstore. Mm. Yep. I think that was my favorite. Um, I mean, there were some things I didn't like about it. Like, I thought the miscommunication was annoying. Um, but I liked it. I, I think I liked it. You don't it. like that trope? <sighs> yeah. Miscommunication's fine, but if it, like, is serious miscommunication. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate when people aren't just, like, don't talk to each other. 
Anyway, I think we should do like a um, like process of elimination. Okay. So, go for it. I'll start with this book first. You want to get rid of it? The I don't even know what it says behind you. The matzah. The matzah. The matzah ball. And this is a a book about Hanukkah. Um, and Aubrey in the store did not want this because she is um, anti-Semitic. He is lying. That's such a crazy thing to say, London. <laughs> She's not really. But she uh, she was wanting to pass over it, so I didn't okay. think she'd really like this book. No, I didn't realize that it was a holiday book. That was. Because the only holiday that can happen is Christmas. Wow, how white Eurocentric are you? And honestly, that's part of the reason why I wanted to actually pick it up. Because I do have a Christmas-centered brain, and there are more holidays to celebrate. To be fair, though, Christmas is better. I, hey. I'm, I'm a big fan of Jesus. <laughs> but because you didn't like this, I'm going to cancel out. Maybe you can get more cultured later. Uh, next... If you need to read the backs or... No, this is purely off cover covers. and title. Okay. I'm going to take out A December to Remember. Purely because that's a cheesy title. <laughs> and it rhymes. I think you like uh, Jenny Bayless. Have you read anything by her? Yeah, I've read both of those books. I think you like her, but purely based on the title... We'll all of, put it later. All three of these authors I've read before. Okay. Because I knew you, I know you've read Emily Stone's books before. Yeah. Um, a Winter New York or A Winter Wish. Those are the two I said I hoped you picked out of. Really? Yes. I kind of... This you might a winter have to wish. Read back. No, 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 no. A winter wish, based on the title and what it's uh, showing on the cover, is a guy and a girl decorating Christmas trees, and that looks so generic. That's like a Hallmark movie, and I want something interesting, something new. And it could be she could have wrote a fantastic story, and the plot could be amazing. I'm not reading the back though. I think you should for these. So two. I'm gonna you take should. that out. Okay. Um, and we're going to go with A Winter New York. Kind of a fun idea. Uh, romance in the city, especially a big city like New York. I'm walking here. That's Boston. Okay. Um, but it's got a, a burly man with a beard. And it's got this girl who's got a, a cupcake or an ice cream in winter, which is kind of strange. So it just looks unique. Uh, and uh, they can do something different between the, uh, different from the, you know, the, Christmas tree farm, small town Christmas, Hallmark vibe. So I'm gonna go with I went to New York. Okay, I'm gonna read the back really fast, and Lemon's gonna have to listen to it and see if he's happy with his decision. So we have a winter in New York, which I'm gonna need you to take the sticker off for me. Okay. It says when Iris decides to move to New York City to restart her life, she realizes she under underestimated how big the Big Apple really is. All the nostalgic movies she'd watched with her mom while eating their special secret recipe gelato didn't quite do it justice. But Bobby, Iris's best friend, isn't about to let her hide away. He drags her to a famous autumn street fair in Little Italy, and as they walk among the food stalls, a little family-run gelateria catches her eye. Could it be the same shop that's in an old photo of her mother's? Curious, Iris returns the next day and meets a handsome Geo who tells her that the shop is in danger of closing. Mm. His uncle, sole keeper of their family's gelato recipe, is recuperating from a stroke and can no longer remember it, so they can't make any more. When Iris samples the last remaining batch, she realizes that their gelato and her gelato are one and the same. But how can she tell them she knows their secret recipe when she's not sure why Geo's uncle might have given it to her mother in the first place? So family drama, too. Mm -hmm. Iris offers her services to help recreate the gelato and soon finds herself falling for Gio and, her, and his family. But when Gio's uncle finally recovers, all the secrets I Iris has been keeping threaten to ruin the new life. And new love. <laughs> She's been building all winter long. See? 
a subplot with their families and are keeping it secrets. It is, it is different. Do you want to hear them? Well, when you started out, it was like, oh my gosh, small girl moves to the big city, romance, and there's a struggling family business. I'm like, I chose the wrong one. Really? But then you got but to you the, like the, the family. Gelato? Uh, I do like gelato. But the, the family part is more interesting. Yeah. Will you take this one off while you're at it? Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, I'm happy with this. Like I said, I wanted him to pick out of these two. Guess why I wanted you to pick out of these two? Um, because you like those authors? They're short. Oh. <laughs> They're shorter. And I think if I finish a shorter one, it'll motivate me to continue reading. So I am happy about this. Um, like I said. I'm interested to see how they do the Hanukkah one. I've never read anything with well, Hanukkah in it. I haven't either. Well, it seems like she's obsessed with Christmas. She's a Christmas romance author. But her book, like, agency, book dealer, whatever it is, uh -huh. um, they want her to write one about Hanukkah. Because she, she's Jewish? Because she's Jewish. Oh, and so they And so she hates Hanukkah. Um, and oh. so she comes, she, like, comes together with one of her, like, arch enemies... Jesus? No. <laughs> Even with him, and he's kind of showing her the beauty of Hanukkah. Oh, okay. So I'm, I think it's going to be a good mix of both. Okay. Um, but this one is the longest one, which is why I was like, I hope he doesn't pick that one, just because it's super long. And this is a menorah, I'm pretty sure. Menorah. Pretty sure it was mentioned in the Christmas tree, actually. Really? Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, that's what that that's is. named. Yeah, we were brainstorming what that was but anyway excited about this i'll probably read like two chapters before i fall asleep tonight so excited for that thanks london for the help yep. and i'll talk to you guys in the next clip morning everyone happy wednesday i didn't vlog at all yesterday it's just hard to vlog when like i'm at work all day i was at work 9 to 4 30 and then anna and i went to the gym then i made dinner and then i went to bed essentially so I didn't vlog yesterday is my long-winded um, excuse. But anyway, I did want to update on what I read yesterday. I actually finished two books yesterday that were unrelated to like the theme of this video, but I thought I would still talk about it. It was my goal to finish um, Tom Lake by Anne, Anne Patch, I don't even know. And Patchett, maybe that's who it's by. Me and my friend Sina have been buddy reading this since August. We we took the longest break, and then for some reason this week we were both like on it. And so I was able to finish, and Sina is almost done. Um, but anyway, I rated that one four stars. Stars? I rated that one four stars. I thought it was really good. And I was listening to it because at work, I do some work sometimes that's just like brainless a little bit, so I'm able to listen to audiobooks or music or YouTube videos, whatever it is. Um, so I was able to listen to that. And then after I finished that, my hold for Two Can Play finally, finally came on Libby. This is like a Spotify original audiobook by Allie Hazelwood. And I love Allie Hazelwood. I am almost certain every book that I've read from her has been five stars. It's a very specific type of genre she's very good at writing like smut scenes um and i just i also really like the romance a lot and so i rated it five stars the audiobook was only four hours so i was able to finish that um yesterday so i finished two books yesterday unrelated to this this challenge but i didn't want to bring up i did start reading a book by lauren asher i actually forgot to mark it on my Good read so i'm going to switch that really fast because i went to the gym yesterday with anna and i don't mind reading at the gym but the thing is is i don't like bringing physical books so on my kindle i downloaded a little christmas novella so it is related to this one i found two christmas novellas that were on kindle unlimited my december darling by lauren asher and then also um I need to look at what it's called, but it's by Allie Hazelwood. Cruel Winter with You. And so I'm going to try to read both of those. I think since they're novellas, I could definitely maybe have a little bit more progress. Um, but I wanted to update. I think I'm like 20, 25% the way through My December Darling. It's pretty good. It's set in Lake Wisteria, which I'm pretty sure that's where Cal is at. Um, I have an hour and 40 minutes left, and I am... 
24% the way through. Yeah, so I think I can definitely like maybe finish this tomorrow or even later today maybe. Depends, I work until 3.30 and then I have a yoga class from four to five. So we'll see a lot. She's a nurse, he's a doctor. And their connection is that her ex-boyfriend, which is his best friend, is marrying her sister. Not on the first page, I was like, girl, what? Your sister's marrying your ex-boyfriend? It was revealed, like they only went on a couple dates, they didn't sleep together, blah, blah, blah. Gabriella or Gabby has had a crush on her ex-boyfriend for the longest time, whatever, whatever. And they're getting married. So Catalina, the main character, and Luke are the best man and the maid of honor. And so, and they work at the same hospital. So I'm just like, oh, okay. It's a little, it's a little cutie little novella Christmas. It's not like overly Christmas, but it's set in December because I'm thinking cream cheese was on my lip, but it's just the glare. Anyway, um, her wedding, her sister, Gabriella or Gabby, their wedding is December 30th. And so it's taking place during the winter month. Um, so it's not overly, overtly Christmas, but like it's it's a holiday romance. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I did want to update on A Winter in New York because I did start reading it. And I'm about to cha start chapter six. Um, and I'm enjoying it. Right now, um, Iris met Gio and she's realizing like, oh, this recipe means a lot and I don't want to just like reveal that one of the family members exposed the secret because only two um, Basadis, I think that's their last names, their last name, um, only two are supposed to know at any given time and the fact that one of the Basadi like family members gave it to an outsider is like kind of a big deal. So she does, doesn't want to like outright come, come out with the fact that she knows it, but she wants to help them because of the connection and she thinks her mom would be upset if she let them go under um and had their business closed down so she is a chef um and she's from england but it takes place in new york which i josie silver i'm pretty sure is an english author um and so all of her books are have an english main character i'm pretty sure she's an english author she lives in england at least but um yeah, it's fun. Um, it's not like, it's not like gripping me like immediately, but it's not bad. And it's also one of those, it's not overtly um, Christmassy. It's a winter, a winter, it's a winter book. So, um, which I think is good because it feels like for Christmas books, if you don't finish them in time for Christmas, then you're like, I'm not gonna read this until next year. Kind of similar to the one book I have a December to remember where I'm like, I'm only gonna read that in December, you know? Um, or like approaching December, but I did forget this vlog is probably going to end um, earlier than I thought because I think this weekend I'm going to try to do a 24 hour reading vlog and any books that I don't finish in this vlog will probably go in that vlog. So that's just a little like update on that. I haven't done a 24 hour reading challenge since December 2022 and I did holiday books for that. So it's been a really long time, but I think I want to try it again. So that's the plan, but anyway, I'm gonna eat my breakfast. I have some bagels and some orange juice, and I'm gonna watch a YouTube video. Um, nobody's posting because they're all preparing for Vlogmas, and I'm like watching a vlog from three months ago, so that explains where I'm at. <laughs> anyway, last day of work before break, and I'm feeling very excited, so I'll chat later. Ciao, ciao. Battery is about to die, but hey guys, happy Friday, happy Black Friday. It is, Lana and I are driving right now at 7 in the morning. We are leaving 30 minutes earlier or later than we thought, but that's okay. But I wanted to update, my camera is about to die. But yesterday I did read a little bit. I don't even know if I talked to you guys on Wednesday or not. I feel like I, I didn't. But Wednesday, I don't think I read at all. Um, just because I had work and then Lana and I came to his uh, parents' house and there's just not time. But yesterday I read a little bit during the day and then I read last night before bed. And I think I'm about 50% the way through. Guys, okay, welcome back. It's Friday. We're ending this vlog and I do have disappointing news. We only finished one book, which was The Christmas Tree Farm, which was really good. It was four stars. I enjoyed it a lot. We did start two other books. We started A Winter in New York. And I don't even know how, like, this is probably like 15%. 
And then I got 50% of the way through on the Lauren Asher novella, which I will probably finish today, honestly. But I have to end this video because I'm starting a 24 hour reading challenge. So this will kind of, that will kind of be a continuation of today's vlog. Um, but yeah, this week was just, you know, it was a holiday week, didn't read that much, but I am happy. I'm still happy with reading one book and then starting the two books. I think it's a good place to be. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everyone's having a happy December when you're seeing this. Um, yeah, happy holidays. Bye, peace and love.